the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me delight on in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, thy comfort. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This reading was taken from Psalms 23, the entirety. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his mighty word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good evening, brothers and sisters. My name is Trevor Israel, and I'm coming to you from the Gospel of Jesus Ministries. Um, the lesson that I'm bringing forth tonight is angels. Can angels procreate? Can angels sleep with human beings? The reason why I am bringing this lesson is because too often, you know, I listen to people on YouTube and these other channels, Christian channels and Christian station and YouTube, and a lot of them have the same ideology, the same thinking that angels came down and slept with women and that's where the giants came from. Brothers and sisters, that is an error. That is not the truth. Angels cannot sleep with human beings. Angels cannot procreate. Angels are spirit beings. They cannot procreate. They cannot make kids. They cannot make children. Angels are immortal. People are mortal beings. An immortal cannot sleep with a mortal being and have kids and have offsprings. That cannot be. That cannot work. The scriptures tell you every seed after its own kind. Every seed after its own kind. An angel is not the seed of man. So, in that saying that they cannot have kids with man because they're not from man. Remember, they came from God. God created them. They just is just like like Jesus. Jesus is also God is also spirit being. That's why he have to adapt us. He could not have, you know, biological kids, biological children. So he have, he have to adapt us. We are his adoptions. So likewise, like the angels, angels cannot have kids either. Angels don't have blood. And human being, a child, requires blood. A child requires flesh and blood. And since angels don't have flesh nor blood, it's impossible for an angel to have a child with a, a, a woman. It's impossible for an angel to have a child, period. They cannot have children. They were created. We're going to start this lesson up in um, Luke 20. The Again, the the title of the lesson is, Can Angels Procreate? Can Angels Procreate? Can Angels Sleep with Human Beings and Have Offsprings? It can't happen, brothers and sisters. We're going to be Luke 20, and we're going to start 27 to verse 30. 27 to verse 30. Then came to him certain of the Sadducees, which deny that there is any resurrection, 
and asked him, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man, brother, die, having a wife, and he die without children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. So the conversation that the Sadducees is trying to have with Jesus is, they're giving him a story with seven guys, seven brothers. Seven brothers, and one of them had a wife, and he died, and they're all going to end up being with her, but then none of them are going to end up having any child with her. But listen what they're going to ask Jesus. Listen where the conversation is going. So, verse 28 again. It says, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If any man, brother, die, having a wife, and he die without children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. There were therefore seven brethren, so there were seven brothers, and the first took a wife and died without children, and the second took her to wife, and he died childless, and the third took her, and in like manner the seven also, and they left no children and died. Last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, so nobody asking a question, therefore in the res resurrection, whose wife will she be? For the seven had her to wife. That means the seven brothers slept with her. Because the scriptures, in the scriptures, marriage and sex is intertwined. When the Bible is talking about marry, most of the time it's talking about when a man sleep with a woman. When a man marry, marry means coming together, you know, commingling. So when, when the scripture is talking about marry, a lot of times it's talking about actually sleeping together. All right? So listen what Jesus is going to say. And Jesus answered and said unto them, The children of this world marry and are given in marriage. So remember I told you, sex and marriage is intertwined in the, in the scriptures. When they're talking about marrying, is actually talking about sleeping with the, the other person, they're sleeping together, right? So he's saying the children of this world marry and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor be given in marriage. So he's saying, the one then that come up in the resurrection, they will be spirit being, so they cannot be married. They cannot sleep with no, no, no one again because they are spirit being. Spirit being cannot procreate, right? Neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. So it said there, he likened them unto the angels. They cannot procreate, and they cannot die. Remember, angels are a mortal being. They can't die. That's why the lake of fire was created. It was created to punish them. Sex is the act of, of the flesh. Sex is not a spiritual act. It's a fleshly act, all right? Sex came into existence for the purpose of population or populate, to repopulate the earth. That's what sex came into existence for. It came for flesh and blood to come together to repopulate or regenerate the earth. Spirit being cannot do that. Because they are immortal, they are spirit being. They don't have blood, they don't have flesh. The Bible, the scriptures also tell you flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The angels are not flesh and blood, that's why they are up there. Flesh and blood cannot go up there. So in that way they cannot have kids. They, was create, they all were created 
God, Jesus created all of them. Right? Let's go to Hebrew. Actually, let's skip people. Let's go to Matthew 25 and 31. Matthew 25 and 31. Matthew 25, we're going to read 31 to 41. Matthew 25, 31 to 41. This scripture that I'm going to read, this is learning something and doing to learning something. You're going to get another, another lesson out of what I'm going to read other than what I really went here for. You know, a lot of people they think that we're going to heaven. And I really don't blame them because we've been dummied down in the Word of God for centuries and centuries and centuries. And we've been lied to for so long that these things become indoctrinated inside of us. So even when People come and show a lot of us, a lot of people, the truth. You know, they still refuse the truth, even though it's something that they can read for themselves. They still refuse it. And this thing we're going to heaven, we are going to heaven. This is a teaching that came from, originated from the Catholic Church. You know, they, they're the one that brought in this flying off to heaven. As a matter of fact, they're the one that brought in all these pagan, pagan worshiping that we, you know, that we worship Christmas, Easter, all of these things came from the, the, the Catholic. And by them doing this, 95% of the churches, they have us, they have you flying off to heaven. But there's no way in the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. Did any of the disciples, Paul, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Zechariah, Ezekiel, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Zachar none of them ever teach that they go into heaven. So why is 95% of the churches, is this is the stronghold of their doctrine, that, that all of us going to, you know, people are going to go to heaven. This is, this is not true. Nobody's going to heaven. None of the disciples them ever preached that we're going to heaven. Jesus never promised no one that he's taking them to heaven. But yet this is the foundation of all of these churches out there, that we are flying off to heaven. Listen what this scripture says. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit on the throne of his glory. So th this is what the scripture said. When the Son of Man shall come, come, because remember he's not here. He's in heaven. So when the Son of Man shall come with his angel, and he's going to sit on thrones of his glory. Because remember when Jesus come back, he's going to sit on the throne of David. He's going to sit on David's throne. And David don't have any throne in heaven, brothers and sisters. The throne of David is going to be right here on the earth, in Jerusalem. That is the mountain of God. That is where God is going to set up his government, in Jerusalem. David has no throne or no kingdom in heaven. None. God, Jesus is going to come back here set up the throne, he's going to sit on David's throne, he's going to rule this earth for a thousand years, where he's going to have spirit being and flesh and blood, and in the end, when, when the, all these trumpets are blown and the seven trumpet the seven trumpets sound, Jesus is coming down here. We are not going there. He is coming here. The tabernacle of God is going to be with man. Not the other way around. Man is not going to be with the tabernacle of God. The tabernacle of God is going to be with man. That means he is coming here. Verse, let me start over again. 
31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit on thrones of his glory, and before him shall gather all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as the shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on the right hand, and the goats on the left hand. Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come, ye blessed of my fathers, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's another thing. They have some of the religion, like the seven, like the um, the seven day Adventists. I'm going to call it the seven day Adventists. You know they they use certain scriptures to try to say that this means that they're going to heaven. Like a scripture like this one. The one that Jesus said, um, in my father's house there are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you and I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, they also you will be. Listen what it says. This scripture says, it says, then shall the king say to them on the right hand, come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared from the foundation of the world. So where was this kingdom? Where was this kingdom? I just read it in verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all his angels with him, and they shall sit upon thrones of his glory. The, the, fathers, the, the kingdom of God has been prepared before the foundation of the world. Jesus did not go to prepare no kingdom for no one. The kingdom of God is already prepared. It's been prepared before the foundation of the world. The kingdom of God is going to be here on the earth. All right? We are not going there. He is coming here. Let's go to Genesis 6. Genesis 6. This is where this ideology started from, with the angels sleeping with um sleeping with 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 men with women. This is where this ideology came from. Genesis six, and we're going to start at verse one. We're going to read from one to three. And it came to pass when man began to multiply on the face of the earth. So listen here, brothers and sisters. This thing started out saying, when men begin to multiply on the earth, it says, it come to pass when men begin to multiply on the earth. And this is not when man first started multiplying. So it could not be talking of that because Adam already had kids. Adam had Cain, Adam had Abel. So it could not be talking about that. So he said, it come to pass when man began to multiply in the face of the earth. There's no way in here that says angel. No way in here that says angel. It says men. Men. M-E-N. Men. Began to multiply in the face of the earth, and the daughters were born unto them. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men. Yeah, the sons of God saw the daughters. So the sons, daughters, okay, of men that they were fear, and they took unto them wives. So how are they going to take, oh my gosh, how are the angels going to take wives? Angel cannot marry. So how, how would a woman be a wife of an angel? They take unto them wives. How can they be wives of angels? Angels cannot marry. Or can they be given in marriage? And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. It says nothing about angel. He said, My spirit shall not strive always with man, for he is also flesh. Angels don't have flesh, brothers and sisters. Angels are spirit beings. They don't have flesh. Verse 3 again, and the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, man, for that he is also flesh, flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. 
angels do not have an expiration date. Man has an expiration date. Why? Because man is flesh and blood. Angels cannot die. Man can die. Angels do not have an expiration date. Man has an expiration date. Man is mortal. Angels is immortal. And there's nothing in here from verse 1 to verse 3 that I just read that says anything about angels. Nothing. Let's go to Genesis 4. We're going to read 8 to 26. Genesis 4. We're going to read 8 to 26. Genesis chapter 4. We're going to read verse 8 to verse 26. Some of the names in here, I might not be able to pronounce it the way it's supposed to be pronounced. So please bear with me, brothers and sisters. Genesis 4, 8 to 26. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, and this Lord that spoke to Cain, brothers and sisters, is none other than Jesus. Jesus is the one been walking up and down through the whole book. The Father never came here to earth. The Father never spoke to anyone. This whole Bible is about Jesus and Israel, his people. This whole Bible is about Jesus and Israel, his people. The Father never came to earth. The Father never came down here in the flesh. The Father never spoke to anyone. No one never seen the, the Father's image. No one never seen his Father's shape. No one have ever heard the Father's voice. This is Jesus. Jesus was also Melchizedek. Jesus was also the one walking in the Garden of Eden. Jesus is the one that also created man. All right? That's another lesson for another time. So, verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is thy brother Abel? Where is thy brother Abel? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? That's what Jesus said. What hast thou done? What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried up from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hands. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. So, Right here, brothers and sisters, Jesus disinherited Cain. Cain was disinherited because of what he did to his brother. So Cain was no longer referred to as the sons of God or the son of God. He was, he's now referred to as the son of the devil because of what he did. He was disinherited. So now he's a fugitive and a vagabond. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out of this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone that's, that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Wherefore, therefore, whosoever slay Cain, Benjamin shall be taken on them sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any man find him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. Remember, Adam and Eve had more children, right? Adam and Eve had more children. So Cain found his wife from among his sisters. Because remember, there was no one else on the earth other than Adam and Eve and their children, right? But 
but this was later on because remember this is not right after he went got chased out of the um out of the garden this thing happened right then because remember people were living hundreds of years back then so this is not as soon as he got um, chased out of the garden of eden he find his wife no that was after his mom adam and adam and eve multiplied and they got more sons and more daughters all right and cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare enoch and he built a city and called call it the name of the city after the name of his son enoch and unto enoch was born irad and irad begat mehujalai mehujalel and mehujalel begat michael and michael and Michael Matuzel, Matuzel begat Lamech. And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zillah. And Ada bare Jabal. He was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as handle the harp and organ. So this is another thing. I'm reading Genesis chapter 4. Remember, the sons of God that people are saying is the angels happen in chapter 6. I'm reading chapter 4. And I even heard them bring this other book and say that the, the angel is the one that showed them about iron and gold and showed them, showed them how to fashion it and all these things. But here I'm reading chapter 4 and it says these children of, of um, Cain, Adam and Eden, these, these children of Cain was know how to fashion gold and how to fashion iron and brass. We're, we're here that say that the angel teach them. There's nothing here that said that the angel teach them how to do these things. They knew how to do these things. They learned. And it has nothing to do with the angels. That started in chapter 6. And Zila, she also bare two ball cane, and in structure of even artifier in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nema. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged, sevenfold truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold and Adam knew his wife again so yeah, Adam knew his wife again when he said knew when the Bible says knew his wife again it mean they were they slept together they had sex when the Bible the scriptures are talking about knew his wife a man knew him his wife or knew a woman or marry a woman it is actually referring to sex okay because sex, new, and marry is intertwined in the scriptures. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God, she said, has appointed me another seed instead of Abel's whom slew, whom Cain slew. So, no. Adam had another seed which is set and out from set seed that's when men begin to call on the name of god so these now become the sons of god right this is what it says in verse 26 and to set to him also were born a son and he called his son's name enos then began man to call upon the name of the lord you hear that so before Enos and Seth, man wasn't dealing with God. Because remember, Cain was disinherited. Cain was disinherited. 
So his seed was not calling upon the name of the Lord. When Seth came into existence, when Seth was born and Seth had a son, that's when men begin to call upon the name of the Lord. So these became the sons of God. Because if you're not keeping God's commandments, you cannot be referred to as the sons of God. You have to be keeping the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ to be labeled as the son or daughters of God. All right? Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians 6. Second Corinthians 6, we're going to read 14 to 18. Second Corinthians 6, we're going to read 14 to 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has the, the righteous with the unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what concord? has Christ with Baal? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? That, And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will bear, I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be you separate, say the Lord, and touch not the unclean things. So God is saying, come out from among these heathens, and be separate. Listen to what he says he's going to say in the other half. And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, say the Lord Almighty. So if you come out from among these people, start worshiping God, keeping his commandments, then you will become the sons and daughters of God. If you're not keeping God's commandments and his statutes and the testimony of Jesus Christ, you are not labeled as the son and daughters of God. All right? You're not labeled. So these sons of God in chapter, in Genesis 6, they are the sons of Seth that went in and sleep with the daughters of the daughters of man, which is Cain seed. Because remember, Seth in Seth's seed, they started calling on the name of the God of the, of the Lord. So they was referred to as the sons of God. Cain seed was not referred to as the sons of God. There was the daughters of man. His daughters was the daughters of man. So Cain, the boys, the, the men of Cain, um, Seth went in unto the daughters of Cain. Because remember back then, they were marrying, brothers and sisters was marrying one another. That's how the world got started, um, started getting populated. Brothers were sleeping with, with sisters. Let's go to Romans. Romans 8 and 14. Romans 8 and 14. Romans 8 and 14. Romans 8 and 14. Listen what it says. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You hear, brothers and sisters, who is the sons of God? The one them that is led by the Spirit of God, they are referred to as the sons of God. I'm going to read it again. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So if you are not led by the Spirit, if you are not keeping God's commandment, you are not referred to as the sons or daughters of God. You are the son of the devil. And I'm going to show you that later on in the scripture. If you're not keeping God's commandment and you, you're doing that that is contrary to God's word, you are referred to as the sons of the devil. Let's go to John 8. I'm going to show you. John chapter 8, we're going to read 42 to 45. John chapter 8, we're going to read 42 to 45. 
Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would have loved me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my words? You are of your father the devil. You hear what God, what Jesus tell these Sadducees and Pharisees? He said, you are of your father the devil. So the devil has children? Yes, he does. Because if you are doing the will of Satan or the devil, you are referred to as his children. If you are doing the will of God, you are referred to as the sons and daughters of God. If you're not doing God's commandment, you are not referred to as the sons and daughters of God. You're the daughters of man, because remember, carnal-minded people are fleshly people, and carnal-minded people do not adhere to the commandments of God, because they're carnal-minded. You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father will you do. He, he, he called him, he called Satan their father. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So God referred to the people who are not keeping his commandments and breaking his commandments. As the children of Satan, the children of the devil. That's just what it is, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Revelation 14. I'm going to read verse 12. Revelation 14 and verse 12. So again, brothers and sisters, angels cannot sleep with human beings. It cannot happen. They cannot, angels cannot have children with human beings. It cannot happen. The reason why angels are spirit beings, they don't have blood. They don't have blood. So they cannot make children. Revelation 14 and verse 12. Here is the patient of the saints. So listen who are the saints. Or the children of God. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. You hear what he says? These are referred to as the saints, the one that keep God's commandments. These are also referred to as the sons and daughters of God, the one who keep his commandments. If you don't keep his commandments, you are not the sons of God. You are not the daughters of God. You are not. Let's go to Job. Actually, let's go to Jude 1. Jude, Jude chapter 1. And only got one chapter. Jude 1, and we read 5 and 6. Jude 1, 5 and 6. I will therefore put you in the remembrance, do you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroy them that believe not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he has reserved them into everlasting chain under darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. So the angels them who left their habitation, their own habitation, is the one then that got kicked down here. They got kicked out of heaven. That was their habitation. And they sinned against God. Not by going with humans, because they cannot go with humans. By transgressing, not keeping God, following Satan. Rebelling. They rebelled against God, following the devil, and God kicked them down here. And you hear where they are? They are, they are under the reserve in everlasting chain under darkness. So if they are under darkness, how can they go and sleep with humans? They are on the chain of darkness. They're not walking around, walking around here amongst humans. They are on the chain of darkness. That's why they cannot pop up in front of you. They're on the chain of darkness. Let's go to Second Peter and show you some more. Second Peter two. We're going to read one to four. 
2 Peter 2, we're going to read verse 1 to verse 4. But there was false prophet also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that, that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reasons of whom the way of truth shall be even spoken of. And through covetousness shall they, shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down into hell and delivered them into chain of darkness to be, re to be reserved unto judgment. And spare not the old world, but save Noah and eight persons, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the city of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them condemn with the overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. So he gave you so many <laughs> he says if he did not spare the angels that sinned against him. This is what he said, for if God spare not the angels that sin, but cast them down into hell and deliver them on the chain of darkness. So when they got kicked down from up, up in heaven, where did God send them? Into hell on the chain of darkness. So they could not have been messing with women. They cannot have been messing with human beings. Because when they got kicked out, they got thrown into the, the um, chain of on the chain of darkness. To be reserved unto the day of judgment. And then they will go into the lake of fire. So they cannot come go unto human beings. And he gave another example. Learning something on the way to learning something. He gave an example of Sodom and Gomorrah. And turning Sodom and Gomorrah, the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, into ashes. Condemn them with, with, with an overthrow. Making them an end sample unto those that after should live ungodly. So he gave you an example of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he tell you, and this should be an example to people who do the same thing. Men sleeping with men, women sleeping with women. That's what they were doing in Sodom and Gomorrah. That's why he burned that city down to ashes. So he said, and this should be an example to the ones them who think to do such thing. So if you're doing the same thing like in as Sodom and Gomorrah, guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to end up in the lake of fire. So you're going to end up in the lake of fire. That's why he's here in the scriptures. He, he gave Sodom and Gomorrah for an end sample for those people who think to do the same thing as they was doing. Enough of that. All man is responsible for their own. Matthews 22. Matthews 22, we're going to read 29 and 30. Matthews 22, we're going to read 29 and 30. Matthews 22, 29 and 30. Jesus answered and said unto them, These Sadducees and, Sadducees and Pharisees were always railing against Jesus. They were having a conversation with him again. And listen to what Jesus tell them. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, You do ear, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Because they don't know the scriptures, because they're always contending with God. They don't know the scriptures. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage. So you're talking about people, humans. They are neither married nor given in marriage, but they are as the angel that is in heaven. Because guess what? 
The angels in heaven cannot marry or give it in marriage either. They cannot have sex with human beings. Another thing. Do you know the description of an angel? An angel has four faces. Calf feet. Six wings. They got feathers all over, eyes all over the wings. They got four faces that they, they got the face of a man, face of an eagle, face of a lion, face of a bear. So if they go in any direction they go in, they don't have to turn. They just they just go. Because remember, they have four faces. So if angels, listen carefully, brothers and sisters. Remember, every seed after its own kind. If you plant an orange seed, you can only get an orange. If you plant a banana seed, you can only get a banana. Right? If angel plant a seed in a woman, what will you get? You will get people looking like angels. Four face, calf feet, six wings, eyes all over the wings. They will be able to fly. If angels were sleeping with human beings and getting children, you would Sometime or the other, you will be seeing people down here, children, human beings with four faces, six wings, calf feet, eyes all over the wings. But why you are not seeing those things? Why you are not seeing, seeing people look like that? That's because, brothers and sisters, angels never slept with human beings and get no children. That's a bold-faced lie. That is ignorance. These books that they have out there that men write, these things are a distraction from the devil. They are a distraction from the devil, from us knowing the truth, or from us sticking to God's word and doing what God says. So all of these are distraction from the devil. He's the one that brought in all of these things. Angels cannot sleep with human beings. I thank you for your time, brothers and sisters. I hope that you got some understanding from the short lesson. Peace in Jesus' name. One love.